This week on Check Please South Florida, fresh and flavorful Peruvian Japanese fusion in Lake Park. One of those places where you should not judge the book by its cover. A seasonal meal you can enjoy in the salt air in Lantana. Everything was so fresh and it was so delicious. And order up a good time at this crab shack in Stewart. Step away from the hustle and bustle of life and relax. Cultural, culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world. Additional funding for Check, Please! South Florida is provided by George and Helen Weaver and the Friends of South Florida PBS. I was actually really surprised by how tasty it was. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. It was nothing like I've ever had before. It feels like a taste of Florida. It was the size of a bathtub. Hello, I'm Michelle Bernstein, and welcome to Check, Please, South Florida, the show where regular people from all over South Florida recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week, we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and then the other two go to check them out and see what they think. This week, when production director Nicolyn Cooper needs a relaxed night out, she heads to her low-key neighborhood bistro near the beach. She says the chef-driven menu offers seasonal dishes prepared simply and thoughtfully with portions that are perfect for sharing with a friend or a date. An air traffic controller, Shane Ahern, says you will definitely want to touch down at his craft beer hole in the wall in Martin County for the daily fish specials. And of course, if you're lucky, you will also enjoy some great live music, but you will always get service with a smile. But first, land surveyor Andre Raymond scouted out a place for us with a cool vibe and the freshest ceviche in town. The unique menu offers a fusion of Peruvian and Japanese specialties in a modern setting that just may surprise you. It's in Lake Park and it's called Ceviche Arigato. My name is Rosemary Beitzel. I'm the owner of Ceviche Arigato. My mother is Japanese and my father is, is Peruvian. I grew up in Peru and there's a Japanese culture. My grandpa was a chef, my grandma was a chef, my uncle, my mother. My mother owns restaurants since I'm a little kid. So it's, it's when I finally wanted to open my own, that's when I came with this idea. The ambience, I wanted to welcome everybody. As you see, there is no like very typical Peruvian or Japanese. We try to fusion both cultures. Ceviche Arigato is a very welcome place when you can experience great food, great ambience, and great service. So when you first walked into this place, you just, you got a real surprise, right? I did, completely surprised. I thought like I was in Miami Beach. Uh, very trendy, a lot of people in there. I thought about doing a roll, a sushi roll, mm -hmm. but I opted instead to go mostly with Peruvian items. Okay. Peru actually has the second largest Japanese population in South America behind, uh, I think, Brazil. Behind Brazil, yeah. yes. The Japanese and Peruvian cuisine oh. is actually, they call it Nikkei cuisine. And it's, oh. and it, yeah, and it's, and it's something that they have been doing for many, many years. Oh. And it's just so delicious because it, it has so many flavors that work well together. So I started out with what they call the leche de tigre. Of course, you can have it as spicy as you wish, and I opted to go low spice. Okay. I did not take my chances on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know, having to blow my nose the rest of the evening, no blow spice. It was good. Nicolyn, what did you start with when you went? You went with a big group, right? I can't, yeah, I took a few of my girlfriends, mm -hmm. and we wanted to try a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So the sampler included a tempura shrimp and avocado sushi roll. Okay. There was a like mashed potato, avocado, Papa cream. Rellenas? Yes, yes, that's exactly it. Which means that was amazing. Potato. So it's actually a mashed potato that you fill with in this case? Avocado. It was amazing. It was incredible. It also included another potato. Calza, maybe. Yes, exactly. Yes. Everything was excellent. We loved it. 
So what else did you have? The chicharron calamari, which is simply calamari. Well, it's crispy, yeah, it crispy. chicharron, yeah. Yeah. which is usually pig skin. Right. But it's interesting, in Peru, which I worked in Peru a little bit, but chicharron, they call that chicharron of chicken, chicharron right. of calamari. Right, it seems calamari. to be like a, a, a catch-all of anything that's skin, fried. Anything crispy fried, yeah. right, right, right. Was it delicious? It was, and then it came with a bit of a tartar sauce Oh, okay. To dip. And of course, one of the Peruvian things seems to be a lot of uh, marinated onions. So what do you think of the place? I mean, you're with a bunch of girls, and you've got this trendy, fun, It was the restaurant. first time for all of us. Uh-huh. A huge space, and it they had a huge bar as well, mm-hmm. um, and it was family friendly. A lot of families were there for dinner. Okay. It's an odd, it was an odd kind of like ambiance, like the TVs and it's almost like a proving Japanese sports bar. It sounds like almost. Does that kind make sense? Of, yeah. yeah. So, did you have any main course? I ordered the ahi de gallina. Uh huh. That was really good. It's a cream sauce mm-hmm. on top of shredded. Chicken. Chicken. Mm -hmm. It was nice. It was very nice. Over white rice. Lovely. One of my friends ordered Nikkei style fried rice, vegetarian style. Oh, like almost a chifa. Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. is. And there was a smoky flavor to it. It was excellent. I wonder where that. It was so good. Yum. Yes, my friend often gets that every time he comes there. I'll definitely go back for that. And the portions are huge. Right. Any cocktails? I ordered a margarita. Okay. Just because it's just my go-to, right? but there is like the Peruvian liqueur that they offered. You had a Pisco Sour. My wife had the Pisco Sour. I didn't even know what a Pisco Sour was, but she uh, said, oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, this one is a good one because they really have the egg white. The froth. Uh, froth yeah, so it's made with egg whites only for the froth part, so that you shake it so much that the egg white almost becomes kind of meringue on the top, oh, cool. and yeah. it has their Peruvian liqueur, and then lime, and it's just so yummy. I did taste it, and it tasted good. Yeah. How's the parking? Oh, plenty of parking. Okay. It's in a strip mall. Yeah. Right. It's perfect parking for uh, around dinner time. Okay. You both had dessert. What did you have? I had the creme brulee quinoa. Oh, there was quinoa inside of a creme brulee. So the base was quinoa, and then the custard, and then How the brulee. Was it was so good. I love the texture of the quinoa. I never the... knew. I never really even good. thought to do that. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. It was How excellent. about you? Well, before I had my dessert, I wasn't done eating yet. <laughs> okay, so talk to me. So for my main course, I had yeah. what's called seca, S-E-C-A, de ris. Is it R- is it R-E-S? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's res is cow. It's a beef stew. The sauce is cilantro-based, so it's very green. And then, of course, on the side, uh, white beans and the onions. It's one of my favorites there. So they do have sushi and they have... They, they have tons of sushi rolls. I've typically gotten the Miami roll when I get a roll. Uh-huh. And they have a chicken soup, which has got the biggest pieces of chicken I've ever seen. So it's interesting. It seems like they have things that you could take home and be a little more homey and yeah. Peruvian. And then they have things that are a little more like for a night out. Oh, so let me tell you about dessert. Tell me about dessert so and then tell me I about what you the think the Peruvian one, which is called uh, picarones. These are in the shape of a handmade donut. Minis? Oh, probably mediums. Uh-huh. They're immersed in syrup. Oh, nice. So it's, it's, it's a good one. So how did you think, Ninglin, of the prices? Huge portions, like I said, and mm-hmm. the prices are re- very reasonable. Well, Andre, is ceviche arigato was your pick. Sum it up for me, please. A surprise. One of those places where you should not judge the book by its cover. Ninglin? The portions are huge. Come hungry. They're... The dishes are excellent, and I definitely would go back, especially for the fried rice. You can spice up your evening at Ceviche Arigato, located at 1447 10th Street in Lake Park, with an additional location in Weston, open daily for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $45. I can't imagine loving Peruvian food more, and I'm so excited to bring you this recipe of papa a la huancaina. Now, this recipe is done in a lot of different ways, and if you're Peruvian, just just cover your eyes a little bit. I make it a little different. It's a little more American in style, but everyone who tastes my sauce for huancaina goes crazy. So let's make it. We're gonna start out with some evaporated milk, I might need more, but we'll see. 
We also have some sauteed onions and garlic, just lightly, no color on it, just cooked until they're soft. We'll put those into the blender as well. Okay, next we've got some cream cheese going right in with that. This stuff, this is called ají amarillo. They're spicy, but they're not crazy spicy. It also gives you a beautiful yellow hue to your sauce. So where my recipe usually you'll see just has about two spoonfuls, I'm just gonna go with three because I like it a little spicier and I love that beautiful yellow color. Next, salt. You really need a lot of salt in this, but it also gets saltine crackers um, and you just wanna kinda crush them in. I think I've got it all. Let's puree. All right, I'm gonna give this a little. Mm. It's so yummy. I love this stuff. Mm. Wow. And it's actually spot on. So I'm gonna actually pour this down because I like loads of it. And then I've got these beautiful potatoes that are simply roasted and I'm just gonna set them right on top. You can serve them on their own or of course alongside a sliced steak and go a little crazy and have some fun. It needs nothing else. Oh, Papa Sata Wangaina, I love you. <laughs>
It was excellent. And then we finished with their zucchini carrot cake. And it was light. I think you got me at that. It was really, everything was just excellent. I try to go once every few months, just because it's kind just, of a trek. Well, also to see what's on the menu, right? right? It's probably fun to just check out and, and see try what they've everything. got going on. Yeah, yeah. Of Well, they're good about posting the menu online. Oh, are they? So every you day. you can kind of look it up Daily. and see uh -huh. what's What, on over social? There. Or on, on their, their website? They have a website, website. and it's, it's on also website. on uh, okay. Instagram. Yeah. So how did you do when you went in? So we started with the... Um, this is your first time? It was my first time. Oh, great. I've driven by the place so many times. Well, you drive by. And just didn't even realize right, it was there, right. right? So we started with what was a cool, a cool soup. You know, the waitress, she said, okay, look, you know, we can just bring it out in two bowls. That's or two cups, awesome. rather, which right. is instead <laughs> Why, of a is single bowl. Is that something that they don't normally do? They don't let you modify. Right. That's what they don't let they you do. They politely, yes. right. That's so different. I was surprised that, you know, they would put it in two cups right. or, I you mean, know. No, but listen, hold on. Changing someone's recipe. I see. And, and sharing a okay. bowl of soup is a very different thing. It's, it's upsetting, especially if the chef creates so many things on a daily basis. And then you go and, and throw a bunch of hot sauce on it. Of, yeah, <laughs> right, right. Did you notice that there aren't any salt and pepper shakers? Yes, I noticed that too. It doesn't bother and me. And you don't need it. Yeah. I do that too to my yeah. restaurant. Oh, good. Yeah, it bothers me. It yeah. doesn't bother me if someone asks for it. I just can't. I'm, I mean, we put especially, that in the food. Right. <laughs> right, especially before someone tastes it and they're already salt and peppering. Sure. Yeah. I mean, everybody's palate's a <laughs> little bit different, but so what, you're right. I, what did you move on to? It was a fish of the day. And the way it works, and I'm sure you know this for a fact, is that things come out one at a time. Sure. It did fill us up. Yeah. It came in a big bowl. There was nothing left in the bowl when we were done. Wow. It was good. What did you have for dessert? We had a lemon, maybe? Lemon berry pie? And don't let my memory sell the thing short, because it was good. <laughs> and of course, there was nothing left. So they don't do cocktails, right? They don't, just beer and wine. Beer and wine. And I think it's really important that we tell people that it's cash only. It is cash only. Did you know that before you went in there on the day? Yes. Oh, okay. Didn't concern me. I think they said they have a, um, ATM, An ATM inside. machine inside. Okay. How did you find the prices? It's handmade, not assembly line food. So the prices are perfect for that. Nickel and Oceano is your pick. Go ahead and sum it up for us. A very casual, quaint restaurant with a limited menu, but the flavors are huge. And make sure to order the straight shooter pizza. Andre? Fresh, fresh, fresh. I think that is my best description of the food there. You can check out the seasonal menu at Oceano Kitchen, located at 201 East Ocean Avenue in Lantana, open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are accepted for larger parties. It's cash only, and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $60. Finally, air traffic controller Shane Ahern could not be with us in the studio today, but he says you are cleared for landing at this little fish shack where you will find daily seafood specials and a fun vibe tucked away in a historic fishing village. It's a spot that can't be missed. It's in Stewart and it's called Getting Crabby at the Stern House. My name is Mark Lemoyne, co-owner of Getting Crabby, Port Salerno. The business started in 2010 with a couple partners merging together from different businesses. I came in in 2012 or 13 and bought out a partner. The neighborhood is Port Salerno. It's an old fishing town. Well, I didn't know it was here until 2008. The most popular thing is the royal red shrimp. Shrimp they only harvest during a full moon, live from a thousand feet down, soft, sweet, tastes like little Maine lobsters. Probably outsells everything 10 to one. And then we do a catch of the day, and then we do a special, whichever fish we get in, with something on top of it, crab meat, shrimp, scallops, with a butter chive sauce. That's our number one and number two selling things. Getting crab is just a great joint. Best seafood around, entertainment Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So it's kind of a hangout, but you leave with good food. Okay, so this is your neighborhood. This right? is my neighborhood. Okay, and do, you, um, do you go to Getting Crabby? I, I don't go even to know what to call this place. 
very often. Do you? And um, Port Salerno has a long history of being a fishing village. Hmm. I <laughs> never even heard of Port Salerno. So, so you could I'm miss so Port sorry. Salerno because it's a single traffic light on Dixie, basically um, Salerno Road and Dixie. Okay. And they happen to be on Salerno Road. Oh, that's great. Okay. Um, it's a very so small I'm building. I'm that it's been around a long time if it's, it's an old fishing It's been village. around since the early 1900s. Wow. And That's there great. was a railroad um, siding that would lead right to the water where the fishermen could load the fish and get it to the, um, the main line. It feels like you've gone to the Keys and you pull up to it and it's relatively nondescript. And the parking is in the back and there's not a lot of parking. You end up parking across the street or mm -hmm. somewhere else. But why I continue to go often, even though there's many other dishes that I've eaten there, is the fresh blue crab. So you have to either call or go to the website or the Facebook page and see if he said the blue crabs are in uh -huh. because they come in live okay. in a little cage. Sure. So I've grown up eating blue crabs, so mm. it's one of my favorite things. My wife, she didn't want to mess with it. But well, it does take a while yes. to get through a blue crab, but if you can deal with it, it is one of the most tasty and delicious adventures. Have you been before? No, my no. first time. And what did you think? I thought it was, you know, it was kind of like a beach beachy, like food shack Like a shack, yeah. And they had a lot of knickknacks for sale. Right. Oh, really? Right? right. Really like cute, like nautical. Oh, cute. Like nautical, like ornaments. Stamped metal oh. fishes that look like a real fish hanging up on that. a netting. And I noticed that they had their own uh, hot sauce. Right. Like a variety of them, like yeah. five different types. Wow, that they make. That they make. So what'd you opt for? A blackened mahi sandwich mm -hmm. with fries. We went for lunch and my husband ordered crab cake entree, which it came with two sides, hmm. cilantro, lime rice, and their tomato cucumber salad mm -hmm. with their homemade basil vinaigrette. Yum. I was salivating when I saw this, the salad and the rice because it just looked so just green and beautiful. It just sounds really fresh. It was, everything was so fresh mm -hmm. and it was so delicious. I actually ordered a side of the cilantro rice and ate the black and mahi <laughs> with it. Were you well, full after you crabs? Well, Could you eat it? The crabs else? were the last part of it. What they have a, uh, a she crab bisque, which Ooh. is a, it's a cream well, you based you really went soup. crabby. Yes. Okay. And um, we split it, uh -huh. although we just got a cup and it was just loaded with crab. And then we had the cracked conch. I did the same. And the ruby jewel shrimp, they had a special mm -hmm. of these red shrimp and they were super Oh, the ruby red shrimp. Ruby sure. red shrimp. Yeah. Excellent. It was almost like lobster. They t it tasted... Very much so. Yeah. Like the, lobster. It's a Florida shrimp okay. and um, it has almost like a langoustine mm. redness and, and flavor to it. My wife had Wait, the, uh, you're still going? My wife wow. had a triple tail. Oh, I love triple tail. She had triple tail. How did they make it? I think she had hers blackened. Mm. My wife, believe it or not, will get the hamburger from oh. time to time. And she says it's one of the best hamburgers she's ever had. I don't really get a chance to eat there that often. Yeah. So when I go, you, you go know, I kind of go all right. out. Yeah. yeah. So did you have dessert? I did. Had the you coconut like rum cake. Ooh, oh, yum. yum. It was quite good. How was service? Oh, excellent. Yeah? The waitress needs a call out. She was the only one there. She worked the bar. It was busy. We were there for lunch, very busy. She greeted us immediately as soon as we entered. Treated us like we were the only ones there. We never had to wait for, like, it, she was incredible. Hmm. She was the most amazing waitress hmm. I've ever experienced. I think I probably had the same waitress. Oh, and yeah. so pleasant. No stress whatsoever. Lots of people were coming in all at the same time. Uh -huh. She just took it with stride. She was amazing. That's awesome. Wine and beer? Wine and beer. I mean, oh, you can back? sit in the back at a bar. Okay. Oh, how big is that place? Well, you know, as you come in the front door, right. when there's music playing, they're usually right there on the right-hand side in the corner. But then there's a doorway that goes to the back. Oh. And there's a bar that's probably twice the size of the bar that's up front. Okay. And a lot of locals, that's their Friday afternoon hangout, Ooh. and they're back there. Oh, okay. You know? <laughs> well, Andre, getting crabby was a place that you frequented, so give me a little summation, please. Definitely an Tell opportunity me. to step away from the hustle and bustle of life and relax. Nicolin? If you want fresh seafood and a cold beer, go to Getting Crabby. They have, and also, don't forget to order their cilantro lime rice. That's a must. <laughs> well, you can grab your cracker and get to work at Getting Crabby. 
located at 4110 Southeast Salerno Road in Stewart. Open for lunch and dinner every day but Monday. Reservations are not accepted and the average price for dinner without drinks is about $45. such a wonderful time with the two of you. I want to thank my guests, Andre Raymond and Nicolin Cooper. For more about the restaurants and recipes featured in the show, or if you'd like to apply to be a guest reviewer, visit us at checkpleasefl.com. And as always, find us on Facebook and Instagram. Join us next time for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please South Florida. I'm Michelle Bernstein. Salut, you two. And I'll see you all then. Cheers. Salut. Salut. Cheers. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world.